Today I want to talk about something called Data Loader. And Data Loader is a library made by Facebook used to um, minimize the number of database uh, requests you make by using uh, caching and batching. So what does this mean exactly? Well, here's um, a typical uh, Vulkan app. So uh, this is the forum example. You have a list of posts. Each post has an author, uh, it can have comments. So let's suppose we were, uh, you know, querying our GraphQL backend to get all the data needed to display uh, this home page. And for the example's sake, we'll suppose that we're also fetching all the comments and all the, the author of all these comments. So uh, we have five posts. Uh, let's imagine that each post had five comments, so that's 25 comments, and each comment has uh, an author, so that's 25 users. If you do this in a very uh, naive way, um, you would have, you know, you would hit the post resolver five times, and each post would then have its uh, comment property resolve using the comment resolver. And at the end of the day, uh, you have 25 authors, you have 25 database requests, right? So your backend is going to the database asking for the author of the first comment of the first post. It gets that and it goes back, asks for the second comment of the uh, second author of the second post. I mean, you can you, you get the picture. It's a lot of back and forth and it would be much more efficient to just have a single uh, request for all the posts and then one for all the comments and one for all the users. And that's kind of what the data loader uh, does. So the way data loader works is it will batch, it will do two things. First, it will batch all um, database uh, requests together. In other words, instead of doing 25 individual requests, you'll only have one. And then the second thing it will do, it will cache um, results as much as possible. So uh, let's say that you don't have one request, but you, you, have, you still have five or six for whatever reason. If um, you ask for the same document twice, well, the second time data loader will be smart enough not to go back to the database, but instead uh, load the document from cache. And what's really important to understand is that this cache is a per request cache. So it's internal to a single GraphQL request. Uh, in other words, when I load this um, homepage, um, this is one request, so things will be cached uh, within that. But if I reload, um, it creates a new caching context. So things will not get cached between requests or between users. So on one hand, this is good because uh, you don't have any cache uh, invalidation problems. Uh, but of course, you won't get the same kind of performance um, improvement as if you really had like persistent caching between requests and between users. So again, you know, every time I reload, it will still hit the database, right? It's not caching in between. So that's very important to understand. That's something I, I didn't know when I first started using data loader and I used it incorrectly. Actually, I was caching too much and then I was wondering why my, my data wasn't updating. So it's very important to understand that uh, it, it's made to be, um, limited to uh, a single request. Uh, I think it, it says this, um, yeah, typically instances are created per request. Okay, so now we understand um, how data loader works and what kind of problems uh, it's solving. So let's see in practice uh, what it looks like in the code. Um, so actually, let me go back to the data loader documentation and talk about the, the APIs that we have here. Um, so each new data loader instant has, yeah, basically two important um, methods, load and load many. So load loads a single document from the cache and load many loads many documents from the cache, simple enough. And it does that based on a key. And to keep things simple, uh, as a key, we'll just use the Mongo ID. So the key could be anything, could be a slug, could be an, uh, a name, a string, a number, 
but for simplicity's sake, we'll use the Mongo ID. And data loader doesn't really, you know, work with any specific database out of the box. So you have to tell it how to um, fetch results and um, work with Mongo. So we'll see that in a minute. But first, here's how uh, I'm using data loader in practice. Um, because I don't really have a, a model layer as such, you know, when I want to load users, I just use uh, the Mongo uh, API, find, uh, find one in Meteor. So I'm doing the same thing with data loader. I'm just using the data loader API straight. I don't have like a, a, a connector layer in this specific case, but of course uh, you could have one. But anyway, what this means is if I want to load um, many documents from my data loader cache, I just call users, the name of my collection, then loader, load many, and then I pass an array of IDs. And if I want to load just uh, one document, I think I have an example here, I call loader.load and then pass uh, a document ID. Um, and by the way, I'm using a async await to, to get the result of the, uh, the, the load function. Now here, something I want to point out is I'm uh, checking if um, I have a document ID because I could have either a document ID or a slug. And what I'm doing is I've decided if the query is using a, a slug, I'll just use the regular Mongo API. I'm not going to bother with trying to make my data loader cache work with both uh, slugs and IDs, although that's, that's definitely possible and it's actually explained in the data loader documentation. But for my particular use case, I've decided, well, if it's an ID, I'll just use data loader. If it's not, you know, I'll take a small performance hit, but I'll, I'll just use Mongo. And this way I don't have to worry uh, about, uh, you know, implementing that flexibility into my data loader layer. It can remain simple. So similarly, if I didn't, if I wanted to, to query by any other property, I would just use Mongo. So both can coexist. They both return the same kind of documents. Um, it, it's very easy to have both uh, live side by side. Now, how how does uh, this thing um, you know come about? Where am I initializing this? So this happens in my Apollo server uh, file here, and what I'm doing is I have a list of uh, all my collections. So you know all my Mongo collections, uh, posts, comments, users, and this is a, a kind of a global list that I've populated myself. And then for each of these, I'm uh, instantiating a new data loader instance and then putting it on the, the context. So that's how I'm able you know, to access it. Um, so here users is part of the context and then I access loader.load many. And when I uh, create this new instance of data loader, I uh, give it two arguments. First, uh, a function that's going to be used to uh, fetch documents. In this case, uh, the function gets an ID and then it calls find by IDs on the current collection. And more about this in a bit. And then the second argument is the uh, the options object where you can set, you know, do I want to cache uh, cache stuff? Do I want to batch stuff? And in this case. Um, yeah, we, we do want to cache and batch to, to um, get the maximum benefits out of data loader. So the last part of the puzzle is this find by IDs um, function. And here it is. So what does it do? Well, it, um, first it gets uh, the list of IDs. So this is actually something I could, uh, yeah, I could get rid of. Sorry about that. Just imagine it's like this. So I get the IDs from the arguments. Uh, I then do a Mongo find. So collection is my collection. I find the IDs. I then fetch to get the results as an array. And then something that's pretty important is um, you have to make sure that you order this, the document uh, in the same order as the IDs passed, right? Because um, that's how data loader is able to to match the you know I'm asking for IDs uh, 
one, two, and three, and I'm getting these results, these documents in result. I have to make sure that the order matches, so I'm just doing that here, and then I return the documents. Uh, that, that's all you need to do. And just based on that, data loader will do the rest, so it will, um, you know, use this uh, with uh, load, it will use this with load many, and do all the, the batching, the caching, and then the matching when you ask for that uh, data again. So, so basically the result of all this is that um, now when you load this, I haven't been able to get it down to just a single request for everything yet, uh, but you can definitely minimize the number of database uh, requests and that in turn, uh, you know, means faster uh, you know, load times, faster server times as well less load on your database. It's just a, a good thing all around to, to have this implemented. And if you're using Vulkan, uh, it will just work out of the box for the posts, comments, users, uh, votes, um, resolvers. And then if you want to implement it yourself, it's really easy. You just have to, um, to call uh, load, loader.load instead of find one, and loader.load many instead of find. So there you go, that's a data loader in a nutshell. Um, yeah, this is just the beginning. Um, maybe I'm sure there's more we can do with, um, with optimizing our GraphQL uh, queries on the back end, but it's definitely a, a really good start.